My name is Gail Bedard. I am district principal for the Surrey School District and I oversee the Aboriginal Ed programming for the 2,800 students in attendance. I am Sim Shian from the North Coast and I belong to the Eagle Clan. We are a matrilineal society where we follow our mother's and grandmother's lineage. My name is Colleen Hanna. My matrilineal um, grandparents are Agnes and Joseph Marchand, Six Mile Creek, Okanagan Territory, and my patrilineal line is uh, Agnes and Andrew Hanna, East Whitburn, West Lothian, Scotland, and I am of mixed ancestry and I live in Coast Salish Territory, and I'm also the district principal of Missions Public Schools. To establish a relationship with the local Aboriginal community, it's extremely important that you fact find, which is find out what traditional territory the district is on. For example, the Surrey School District is on the Keitsi First Nation and the Semiamo First Nation territory. It's a shared territory. So the very first thing I did when I moved into the Surrey School District was connect with the community members, um, asking a lot of good questions. Uh, who to connect with, who, so the very first person I connected with was the chief, um, Peter James. And um, from there, the relationships were established with the Katsi First Nation. And then for the Samiamo First Nation, it was looking at the chief of the Samiamo First Nation, and it was um, Willard Cook. So you build those connections right away to ask questions around the territory that we sit on. And then from there, it's um, when you do meet with um, meet with other community members or um, schools and, and um, meetings and stuff. It's important to recognize the territory that you're sitting on so that before I even begin my meeting I will acknowledge that we are on the shared territory of the Katsi and Samiyama First Nation and it's important that the work that happens today will acknowledge that. Well, it's really important to remember that we are on traditional territories and, and for, for us our traditional territories are time immemorial in, in terms of that we've, we've always been here and these are traditions that have been passed along um, century after century um, to us today. And that's something that's really important that we are continuing to honour those traditions and honour our ancestors by carrying on the protocol that has been passed along through the centuries and that is why it's, it's very current. It is something we do today, it's something that's being practiced right now, it's part of our traditions, and so it is very important to continue to um, carry on those traditions in our protocols because it is part of who we are. For example, in Stalo territory, uh, it's tradition that you hire a speaker to follow the protocol and do a welcoming, and part of that protocol is that you would blanket that person to warm their heart and warm their words, as well as to put a, a bandana on them to um, give them a good mind and remind them of um, those connections that they have, their, their mind and their heart, and to, to speak on behalf of the, the people. And you also pay them as part of that tradition, and that's where you see the money being pinned on to, to the blankets. And that's for Coast Salish territory. It is different in, in every, everyone's territory how you go about following the protocol, and we want to make sure that that is really understood that this is just Coast Salish territory that I'm talking about right now and each individual First Nation might have slightly different protocol from Gail's school district and the First Nations in her school district to the way we um, would do something in, in, in Mission school district might be slightly different because our teachings are slightly different in our First Nations communities so that's sort of an example of a protocol that that's gone on for centuries and centuries, the blankets and the insignificance of the blankets and uh, the, the protocol that, that comes around those blankets and that's what we do today. It just looks a little bit different in type of the, the type of blanket, the type of money that obviously you're paid looks a little different than what it did in the past. The question about protocol, every territory is different no different than the languages. I'm from the north, I am Simshian, and our neighbors are the Nishka and the Gitsan. And although our languages have similar dialect, uh, our protocols are different. 
And so it's important to learn that, again, building relationships with the local Aboriginal community. So for the Prince Rupert School District, they would turn to the Simshan people to start asking questions. So I'm a guest on the Coast Salish territory and my learning about their protocols and knowing I'm from the north is very different. So this morning we, we did the Coast Salish protocols and the calling of witnesses. But when you take a look at my history and my ancestors, we, have, we had potlatches, which obviously were banned historically and was brought back. But the way we pay um, our respect to those who come to our feasts is that you know the chief would call up a potlatch and everybody would come together in a longhouse and to pay them and thanking them for honoring the chief with their presence, he gave away his wealth. So he gave away everything. And what he gave, it could have been a copper shield. If you received a copper shield, then now your responsibility is to take it back to your community and to share the stories that you heard that day. And it's similar to the Coast Salish, where you call upon witnesses and, and we're thanking them for that. Similar, but different. So there's similarities, differences, and we need to learn what they are. That question, and that's a really good question because I think it's extremely important that when you, when you build relationships with the local Aboriginal communities, you will find out whom the territory you sit on. And so with that, you would, it would be um, respectful and proper protocol to, to speak to the Aboriginal Education Department. For example, if the teacher was doing a lesson in regards to the Coast Salish, they would ask the question, do you have a community member who can come in and open this unit for me? And you would invite in a community member because it builds relationships, but also connections to the traditional territory and the, and the people that are there. So if that person is not available, then you ask questions, further questions, say, okay, so how do I do this? Who do I call? You know, can I do it myself? And that question is appropriate. And yes, you can, for example, recognize the territory that you're sitting on. But to do the traditional drumming and singing would not be appropriate, respectful, and that it needs to come from that community. First, First and foremost, we still, something that we reiterate is that we need to recognize the, the traditional territory that we're on. And by doing that and, and establishing that this is a traditional territory, we also do recognize that we have other guests of the territory. As Gail um, is, is Simshan in, in Coast Salish territory, I am Okanagan in Coast Salish territory. So we do come and we, we do work as guests in other people's territories. So as part of that, it's our job also to remind, remind people that we have other First Nations communities. We have Métis communities, uh, Métis people, Inuit people that come to our school districts and uh, they do carry different cultures with them. And those are some of the things that we, we always do. And so when we're doing um, a play this year, our school is doing a play on um, uh, jingle dress. And that is something that is not indigenous to Stalo territory. Powwow is from the prairies. And so what we do is we open the play with uh, a traditional Stalo opening. So we'll have someone from the territory open, open the play and acknowledge the fact that we're on traditional territory and talk a little bit about why we're bringing uh, another culture, another Aboriginal culture into our school district. Because that is also a teaching that we need people to understand is that because we're in just in Coast Salish territory doesn't mean there are many different First Nations communities that have different territories and different languages and different protocols and different ceremonies in British Columbia alone, let alone across Canada. So that is something that we try to re remind people while at the same time we are honoring the traditional territory we're on. I think that recognizing the traditional territory that the school district is 
operating on should be acknowledged at any opportunity. Staff meetings, assemblies, uh, classroom teachings, that eventually, uh, the whole idea is to educate all students about our rich and vibrant history that we have. And to do that, we need to um, recognize and appreciate the territory that is there. And you can ask that question in the Surrey School District. If we were to do a survey and say, what traditional territory do you sit on? And 64,000 64, students were asked that. Probably 1% could answer that question. But if we could role model as leaders that this territory at once did belong to the Katsi and Semiamo First Nation, eventually every child in that school district will be able to say the territory, recognize it, but also honor the, uh, the, the Aboriginal people that are there. And it's important to also um, show and demonstrate that there are other cultures there as well. It'll create that sense of belonging, it'll create that sense of pride, and eventually we will not have to have separate Aboriginal education departments within any district because we will finally be embedded and will be part of the curriculum from kindergarten to grade 12. Part of, part of my teachings is that uh, the elders have, have said to me that when we go about with a good heart to do our work, that it's taken that we're going about our work with a good heart. And sometimes we do make mistakes. Uh, I can think of an example where we were, uh, we had a very large art piece that the student body in our school district had worked on, and it was a Stalo uh, artwork. And we conducted a ceremony, and the students did the ceremony for the school, so they conducted the entire ceremony. And during that time, one of our, the fellow who was leading the work, forgot a piece. And one of the community members stood up and in a very pleasant way said, my brother has um, overlooked this piece. And we realized that, oh yeah, we had forgotten a small piece of the work. And we just changed what we were doing at that time, um, incorporated that part to make sure that we weren't being disrespectful and then carried on with our work. Because part of our teachings are that, again, is, is it comes from our heart and that we share what the elders have have taught us and the elders have, have taught us that th this is what you say when the, this occurs as well is that you've been taught by the elders that this is the protocol and I'm not sure that um, I understood that that was also a part of the protocol I'm sorry that I've missed that and how can I incorporate that into what I'm doing for the future and I take it as a learning it's very much assessment for learning uh, as we're going along we are trying to learn and we are learners and our culture is is changing and dynamic and it's also different people have different pieces of the culture within our own territory that might do things slightly different because we have four different First Nations in Mission School Districts so each of them carries just slightly different protocols so depending on where we, we are and who we've hired they may do things slightly different so we just try to make adjustments learn from from our mistake and we apologize to the community and the elders and they do realize that you know we're doing this with a with a very good heart and our intention is that we're trying to to teach and that we are learning as well and we're taking their lead from that and so they do know that we're checking in with our communities as Gail has mentioned that we're checking in with our communities to make sure we're following the protocols and so it doesn't happen very often where that occurs but when it does it's it's a really nice opportunity to learn and build on on that um, protocol that that is in the territory. We always have to look at our traditional territories and that's something that you know Gail and I feel strongly about and that is just part of, 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 our, of the work is that you honor your traditional territories and also recognize that we don't all have the same opinions. We all come from different, uh, different backgrounds and sometimes there's a long standing history of political uh, difficulties between different First Nations families different First Nations communities within a, a, a school district or within a community. And those are long-standing uh, pieces of, of political 
um, strife that have occurred over over a, a very long time. And I guess for us, our, our job as a liaison between our communities and our school district is to try to find a common ground. And part of that common ground and that, that work of establishing a common ground is to really focus our attention on our students and, and what, what we're doing for our students and, and why our students are so important. And that is why we come to the table together and collectively we come to the table together to work for all of our students to be um, to be successful and, and successful in, in any way that they're seeing necessary for them at that time and that's the important piece is for us to always try to rem remind ourselves and to remember that we're there for the students and we're trying to help people overcome those 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 difficulties because it is really hard to undo that in a very short period of time but we are trying to work for our students and having that common ground and finding that common ground and really appealing to the the student and for our future because we're always looking towards the future and, and how we can help our students for the future and not just this generation but many generations from here on out how can we make it better and that will often make it easier to work with so-called competing First Nations communities um, so-called competing ideals or competing ideas of, of, of their, their political um, position. And so if we can find that common ground and really establish a relationship with those communities and say, you know, we're here for this. Can we work on working for our students for the future? Um, really helps that piece and really establishing the, the relationship with our communities. We really have to establish that relationship because you, you need to be able to have those conversations with some of our communities. It's not easy. It's not uh, something that's, uh, that's really comfortable and it, it's just part of, of the work and I know that through our work through our enhancement agreements that has created a lot of challenges for many school districts because of the political nature in the communities that it, it's really hard to establish that peace but we've been able to find the common ground of we're looking for the future of our children we're looking for the future of our students and for you know a sh even a short period of time we've been able to establish that common ground and, and, and work together and really really work together and it, it is something that's part of who we are and part of our past and part of who we will continue to be and so it's just finding that that common ground is really really helped us be able to move forward and, and and work towards that and honor that the fact that we do have different First Nations communities they are different and unique and really by holding them up too is is giving them the honor and the strength and the empowerment to realize that they are unique and, and different communities within within our school districts as well you know because of the the community issues can get spilled over into when you have Aboriginal groups coming together a cedar is integral to the West Coast and so what we did is we put, which is traditional, is putting cedar above the entranceways. And so when they walk through, it's a cleansing and that they leave all those bad feelings outside and that they come in with a good heart, an open mind to listen to the important messages that will be shared on that day. And so that, that cedar will signify and, and when you remind, when there is, um, animosity at the table you just a friendly reminder to why the cedar is there and, and that sort of it, it brings people down to again focusing on we're here for all students Aboriginal is a political term that has uh, evolved over time to try to encompass all First Peoples in Canada and that, in that includes First Nations communities, First Nations status and non-status, uh, Métis as well as Inuit communities and that is a, a sort of an all overarching, all encompassing, encompassing word to try to, to try with one word identify the First Peoples and the original peoples in Canada. And the challenge that we have, which we've heard from teachers and educators in general, is they do not want to offend, but they're struggling with how do we, how do we acknowledge the students within our classroom? Do we say Aboriginal? Do we say Métis? Do we say Inuit? And again, it really depends on the territory you're on. For example, if I went into an, a full First Nations community, then the terminology I'm going to use is First Nations. And, but being in Surrey, 
where you have 64,000 students, 2,800 Aboriginal students, you use the word Aboriginal because you have a very high, um, one group is dominant over another. So we have a very high Métis population. We have a very high First Nation population. But we need to acknowledge a very small Inuit. I mean, I think we only have one Inuit family in Surrey. So when you, when you are working with students, you know, you want the students to, to identify who they are, not the word Aboriginal, that my son is Haida. I want him to say, I am Haida. You know, so you, you encourage your children to find out who they are and that they can say, yes, I'm Aboriginal, but in fact, I am First Nations, I'm Haida from the Queen Charlotte Islands. And so I, I think that as we continue to educate Aboriginal students about their true identity, that, self, that sense of belonging will help them. And then once they feel like they're part of the school system, they will start doing well academically because they now have an identity. Part of our, our culture and our traditions and obviously our protocol is we always start, we always, always want to start the day in a good way. And part of the hanging our cedar boughs, as, as Gail has mentioned, and, and sort of reminding people of, of their good heart and their open mind when you come in, our blankets, our bandanas, all those pieces are reminding us of the good work and having a good mind and a good heart when we go to do, do our work. So when we start our days, we uh, start with an opening and a welcoming, and there, there's a. We've always tried to explain in a, in non-traditional way, in, in Aboriginal, non-Aboriginal way, of what it is we're trying to do. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to establish a tone for the day, set the day, and make it a, a, a good day. Again, with an open heart, open mind, and part of that is it's in some communities they may call it a prayer. And just because we don't have a, a, a word for that to explain it in any other way that we're trying to, to start the day, I said, in a, in a good way. And that's um, something that is challenging for some schools and some school districts that it may be perceived as a prayer in terms of a religious sense. And really what we're trying to do is establish uh, a good tone for the day and really honor the territory we're in, honor our ancestors and our ancestors' work and that we are, we are, we are looking and, and wanting to start the day in a, in a good way. So when you, when you take a look at it, and, and I think that's the, the dilemma we face as First Nations peoples, because before contact, you know, it was a daily part of our lives to give thanks to the Creator for when we were fishing. You know, we took what we needed for, for sustenance for the family, feeding the family. And so we would always have to acknowledge and thank the Creator for giving us the food that we were going to take for the day to feed our families. And so, and through our, our teachings, we have always given thanks to, and, and when the Europeans came in, the word religion and prayer, prayer was attached to that, and that's not what it was. It was that we always had to give thanks for what we were going to be taking for that day, for that, to prepare for the winter seasons. And so, and now it's been turned into a prayer, when in reality it isn't. It's cultural teachings that we continue to practice that has been handed down from our ancestors.